everybody and welcome to a mod spotlight. My name is Iskal and today we're going to take a look at random things. This is a mod that has been out there for a while, uh, but I felt that there was not enough or nearly no information about this mod when it comes to 1.7.2 Minecraft or mod version 2.1. So why don't we, without further ado, take a look at what this mod has to offer. Cool, the first thing we want to have a look at is some basics. Uh, this mod features a block called the Fertilized Dirt, and this block is something you want to get pretty early. Uh, now you craft it by combining some rotten flesh and some bone meal with dirt. Not too bad, pretty easy to get early on. The reason you want to get it is because you can do some cool stuff. Check this out. I don't have any water nearby or anything, but I can still grow my sugar canes on it. Now, another good thing with this block is that it increases the speed of which the plant or crops grow on it. So, um, it forces kind of ticks up, tick updates to the sugar canes here. And if we grab a hole, any hole will do, we can also make it into farmland. And there we go, we can now create uh, our, our nice farm with, with carrots and potato and whatever we want to grow on there. And we don't need any water nearby. Cool. So that is the fertilized dirt, that is the first block, and we'll leave that there and we'll see how it grows. Um, very useful. Now, the second block that I want to show you is uh, the player interface. This block is pretty cool. Uh, I love this block and I use it a lot in my single player world. So, what it is, is you place it down and it looks all fancy. Uh, look at that glowing, textures rolling and all that. This is now essentially your interface. You've got a few different slots uh, on each side and then on top you have your armor slot. So any item that you feed in to the top of this will end up in your armor slots. Any items that you feed in, um, for example, through a hopper. Here, let me give you an example. Uh, on the side of it will enter your inventory. So I put a hopper down there and I put my hoe in there and I should get it back to my inventory. You saw that? Wow, that's cool, right? Uh, now to further demonstrate what you can use this with in case you're using other mods, for example, uh, Applied Energistic or Buildcraft or Project Red, you can automate so that it always keeps your inventory full with something. For example, I got 64 torches here. Let's see what happens if I destroy them. Come over here. And it should restock my inventory. Um, there we go, look at that, just took a little bit of time, and I got torches, so if I'm out adventuring, and yeah, I picked them up, so then it, I, I double checked it, uh, <laughs> if I'm out mining, I can have infinite torches as long as I provide this chest with torches, pretty cool, very, very handy indeed, so that is the player interface. The third block, uh, let's have a look at the lapis lamp. Now, I am not sure, to be honest, how to power this or if this is all that it is to it. But you have a lamp, it doesn't really emit any light, as far as I can tell. Um, but it looks pretty cool. So that is the lapis lamp. Oh, by the way, the way you make the player interface is pretty expensive. You use obsidian, an ender chest, a player core, which is essentially lapis around an emerald, like that and you also need a nether star. I should say that this mod features some pretty late game features. Um, so beware, they are expensive, but they are very good. The lapis lamp, simply encase lapis around, uh, simply encase a lapis with glass. Okay, so next block, online detector. Now the way you make this guy is simply some redstone, some lapis and some smooth stone. This here is a very very cool gadget if you play on a multiplayer server like I do. Uh, place it down and let's grab some redstone. And what you can do then is right click it and you can say detect a player and since I'm the only one online here I'll detect myself and you can see that it turns green. Now if I type another name for example John and save that. There's no John on the server, so it doesn't turn out green. The cool stuff with it is that it will emit a redstone signal. Now, so you can build some pretty fancy stuff with that on a multiplayer server. That is the online detector. Next, the fluid display. This is a personal favorite as, as well of mine. It is pretty simple to make. You just encase a glass bottle with some glass paints and you get eight of them. Now, if I go ahead and come over here again and I, I pick up the lava bucket, 
and I place down these like so. They look all good and they, you know white and, and pretty cool. But what I can do is that I can fill them up with some fluid. And I forgot that you should very much have an empty bucket at hand as well because the, it will spill. Cool. So if we let this lava run out, we're being a bit quick about this. I think this is a bug by the way. I don't think that it should do this. But uh, for now it does, and it's fine, you can pick it up. Um, look at that. You got yourself a lava wall. And it doesn't hurt you, don't worry. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It doesn't consume the lava either. Uh, maybe that's because I'm in creative. Let's, let's just check that. Uh, put one of these down. Oh yeah, it does consume the lava. It puts the puts the source block there that's why it does that okay cool and uh, let's go back to creative right so that is the fluid display and i've used that to make a cool looking aquarium in my house um, cool so let's get on next let's look at some of the item collectors that are in this mod you got your item collector and you have your advanced item collector the item collector you craft by using an obsidian stick a hopper, ender pearl, and some redstone. The obsidian stick is simply just splitting obsidian, and it splits into three for some reason. Look at the sugar canes; it has already grown. Cool. Uh, so the way you, the way this works is that you place it down using shift click on an inventory, otherwise you'd open the chest. And if I throw something nearby, it will end up in the chest. It's getting picked up. I think the radius of this guy is, huh? I'm not actually sure. Um, could be 10 nah it's not that far it's like two blocks yeah cool so that is the item collector now what you want to do pretty soon is to upgrade it to an advanced item collector that you do with a diamond and two glowstone dust this guy is much prettier and easier to work with this guy actually features an interface you can right click him and you can set the radius of where you want it to pick up items so for example if i wanted to pick up within 10 which is the maximum I can set all of these to 10 and it will create this kind of sphere around it and if I throw the redstone over here, boom, into the chest. Pretty handy, right? Another thing that you can do with it is install a filter. Now in this mod there are several filters. There's an entity filter and a block filter and an item filter. I do not know what you use these for. What I do know is if you want a block filter, for example, on this chest, you can shift click, shift right click it and you'll see that I got a block filter chest but i don't know what it's used for so we're not gonna go through those if you know please add a comment to this video it may help me and someone else but the item filter i do know so if you right click this guy you will get your ordinary item filter you if you're familiar with other mods you'll see that uh, you you will have seen this before now what i can do here is say okay you're gonna accept redstone and that's a white list. If I set it to blacklist, I'm saying you're going to accept anything but redstone. So I want this guy to only accept redstone. And it will ignore the word dictionary. Doesn't matter for redstone, right? And uh, now place your advanced item collector. Put the item filter in there. And raise the radius a little bit. And if I throw down redstone, it will pick it up. Oops. Again, in creative. Um... There we go, survival. Throwing down the redstone, we'll pick it up. Throwing down a hopper, won't. Cool. So that is the filter. Uh, and I mean, you can use these things for a, lot of, for, a lot, for a lot of cool things. Next up, we have the wireless lever. Uh, I have found this to be a bit buggy. So I would recommend maybe wait until they update the mod um luminen who is the author of it uh, but basically um it should you can you can specify the range of this guy by the way in the config file and uh, i think by default it's set to 10 blocks the way you craft it is simply a block of redstone over a lever now what we can do is say um oops i don't need this I right click where I want to set the target, so I right clicked on this block, the redstone lamp, and I can set the lever over, oops, right click, and shift right click, sorry, <laughs> shift right click, and then place, there we go, so shift right click to set the target, and then normal right click to place, and boom, got your wireless uh, 
lever and I mean it doesn't look very cool but don't worry that's just when you have the lever selected so that's not really visible it's also good for troubleshooting right so pretty cool uh, as I said, I have found it a bit buggy. Uh, it seems to be inconsistent, giving me inconsistent results. Maybe I'm derping it up. Maybe, maybe not. So uh, beware. Okay, moving on. Um, now we're gonna take a look at what is the absolute coolest thing ever about this mod. This is the reason for me loving this mod. Have you ever felt like me that oh man, why did I, why did I decide to live here? You know. Why did I decide to live in a place that looks like Sweden, where I'm from, um, and not a greener, cooler place? Or why not have a, I don't know, cool, cooler biome than the one I decided? But you've already put your base up and you, you know, you're kind of happy with yourself about that. Well, here's the fix for that. This mod feature a biome painter and a biome capsule. Now check this out. If I throw the biome capsule down in any biome by pressing Q and let it sit there, it will actually absorb this biome. So we are in a boreal forest. And just give it a moment here. There we go. If we pick it up and have a look at it, it will say boreal forest capsule. Charges 49 of 256. Now if I go over, say here, to this beach and have that on my hotbar, I can start painting this biome by right clicking. So you'll notice that this specific block that I'm standing on is a boreal forest, while this is a beach, and this is a beach. Now, isn't that useful? Well, I think so. For example, I happen to have a mushroom island capsule here. Check this out. If I go ahead and I press F7, which is the NEI or Wayla interface for mob spawning, and mobs can spawn in a mushroom island, and I can paint it. Not only do I get this fantastic, awesome looking green grass that a mushroom island uh, features, but I also remove the mob spawns. Uh, now, you're eventually, I'm in creative here, but you're eventually gonna run out of charges, so 256 blocks is what you can paint. Uh, you don't have to worry about the Y level because it paints all the way down to bedrock. And if you wanna be smart about this, changing your biome after you've already kind of made base and all that, build a platform up in the sky above your base and just paint the platform and you're good to go. But look at this, the green grass, that is amazing. Now, when the charges run out, what you can do is simply drop it on the biome that you've created and it will load up again. So you only ever need one per biome of these capsules. Isn't that cool? I think that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in a mod. Almost. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Now, we do have two other very, very cool feature uh, um, items. We have the drop filter and the void voiding drop filter. What you can do is that you can, using the item filter, say, hey, I want to drop any rotten flesh. Or well, that's at least what you would think it does. But what it really do is, let me get some rotten flesh in my inventory. If I'm out mining and I kill a few zombies here and there, I always find my inventory clogged up with rotten flesh. Now, uh, oh dear, I am very derpy with this today. Sorry, guys. Um, I always find my inventory, jeez, ah oh, yeah, right, I'm dropping it into the NEI. Okay, here, let's do this. So I'm out mining and rotten flesh drops and it cloaks up the inventory and, you know, all sorts of bad things happen when you have a full inventory. Well, as long as I have this item in my inventory instead and I've set it to whitelist rotten flesh, I won't pick it up. Isn't that cool? What I could do as well, you know, is using the void voiding drop filter. Uh, same same thing here. I'm, I'm I've set it to uh, to spider eye, and I put it in there. And now if I spawn in some spider eyes here, I will indeed pick this up, but I will immediately void it. Notice my inventory. Boom, gone. It's a bit dangerous, you know. Use at your own risk. But when out mining, that is an amazing thing because there is stuff that you don't really want to pick up. Um, Let's have a look at how we make these. So the drop filter is very simple. Flint, some string and leather. And the void drop filter, you add a void stone. And we're gonna get into the void stone right now. So the void stone, here's how you make it. Ender pearl, surround it with smooth stone. This is your mobile 
trash can. Now if you feel a bit scared about using the voiding drop filter, use this instead. You can open it and you can throw things away. Now do notice that they do disappear immediately, you don't have a second chance, so they, once you put them in there, they're gone. So that is the void stone, I find that very useful as well. We also have the white uh, stone, and I believe that to charge this up, you just run around and kill stuff and that will charge up the stone. That is at least what I believe uh, happens. Now the only way to get this is to find it in a dungeon as far as I know. What it does is that when you die it will consume the stone uh, as long as it's charged and it will make sure you don't die. So pretty, pretty handy as well. Uh, we have the ender letter, we have the sound recorder and we have the magnetic force. Now these are items or specifically these two are items for multiplayer. The ender letter is pretty cool. Now if you, here's how you craft it by the way, you need an ender fragment which is ender pearl split into flint, get four of those, um, paper and leather. Now if you right click you can say hey I want to send a letter to this guy. Yeah that sounds cool and I want to send him 32 torches because that's what he need. Right and then you simply shift right click to send it. And boom, I received an ender letter from myself. How cool isn't that? I love that feature. Now on a multiplayer server, you can imagine that's gonna be very useful. You can right click and you can grab your stuff and the ender letter is gone. Cool. Next thing that is also very useful on multiplayer servers is the magnetic force. You make it with an emerald, an ender pearl and some paper. Now right clicking this will give you an interface of all the players online and you can teleport to them. Once you've done that though, the magnetic force will destroy itself. And I don't know the maximum radius, it may be, I think if I read the config file correctly, it's 200 blocks. But I'm not sure. Uh, next we have the sound recorder. And this, oops, this you make out of iron, some wood and a redstone torch. This here is pretty cool, but I'm not really sure what I would use it for. I'm sure someone can find a use though. Right, uh, if you shift right click, you'll see that it turns red in the little uh, corner there. And now it's actually recording sound within Minecraft. If I now right click, I can see what's happening. So I'm generating grass sound, I'm taking something off a mob, or that's a bat nearby. So yeah, pretty cool. I can see a use for it in like UHC when you're sneaking around in caves and you're looking for someone and you, hear, you think you hear steps, have this with you and you can be certain. So that is that. Now this mod actually goes deeper than this. So the next thing and probably what you want to start off with this mod if you want to get some cool stuff is all the armor and the sword and all and, and that. The armor is actually very powerful. I've done some testing and I find it to be either as powerful as diamond armor or even better. Uh, to get it, you need Spectre Iron, and to get Spectre Iron, you need an Ectoplasm, alright? So what is an Ectoplasm? Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad you asked. Let's come over here, and let's switch our... Are we in creative? Yeah. Uh, let's come over here and grab some spiders. Um, once you kill a spider, or any mob for that reason, with a Spectre Sword, you have a 20% chance of spawning a specter, okay? Now the specters will fly away and they will drop when killed a ectoplasm, which you make the specter iron of. If you have a specter sword like I do, the chance is 20% and all of these ratios can be changed in the config files. I'm having really uh, no luck today, but uh, you can also see that I'm avoiding all the spider eyes that I'm getting. That is, that is so cool. I love it. Come on spiders, give me a spectre. Maybe I do need to be in, uh, in survival mode, I'm not really sure. Um, let's turn this today as well. What I've done though uh, is that I've made a little cave here, which means that the spectre will have to fly out of it before, uh, before he gets too far. And that have helped me got the ectoplasm. So that's a good tip from my side. Uh, we should really have seen a specter. Huh, we're being very unlucky. Okay, maybe if we don't get any on, on those three, we will move on. Uh, that'll be a bit of a surprise how they look, um, but uh, nothing super fancy. They, they, uh, they look a bit weird. Uh, they don't seem to attack you, so 
that's pretty cool. Uh, also, this armor here gives me a transparent skin. So you can see, you can see straight through my stomach, which is a bit weird, but pretty cool. Um, so, what can you make out of out of the Spectre Iron? Well, you can make the iron, you can make the sword, you can also make... Where did I put that bow? Um, here, let me... Uh, you can make a pretty powerful bow that doesn't consume arrows. This guy here. Um, the Kojaku. Kojaku. How do you make it? Oh, wait. Maybe you can't make it. I thought you could. Uh, maybe that is only a dungeon find or a creative item. Well, I played around with it, it was pretty cool. Uh, but more importantly, you can make the Spectre Key. Now the Spectre Key actually uh, gives you the access to another dimension. Simply hold right click and let it be. And some weird particle effects will happen and you will end up in the sky. But notice, this is a new biome, uh, or sorry, new dimension. And you are actually at Y level 41. If you fall out of here, here let's test it you will be spawned back in here with a slowness six. Now, the sad thing about this is that I can't figure out if you can actually harvest these spectre blocks. I've tried with, um, I've tried with using um, the spectre iron, I've tried with silk touch, uh, um, a silk touch pickaxe, doesn't seem to work. Why is that a sad thing? Well, I'll show you once we're back down. What I did notice though is that you can actually drop a biome capsule here and you will get the sky biome. I'm not really sure why you would need it, but you can. Um, maybe that's a part of the creation. So if you figured out if, if we can create these blocks and how, then let me know in the comments because that's going to be really useful. Now let's go back because there's really nothing else here than, than just a box like that. Um, and you can't really go outside it either because then you will be teleported back. So I don't know what you should do there. You can't really build a base or anything either. But uh, let me show you why we really want them blocks. The Spectre block. Look at this. Wow. That is an X-ray block that looks so cool with some lighting effect around it. Makes the grass look super weird. I really hope that you can make these and that someone comments and tell, tell us all how you do them. Um, cool. So we'll put these back. Uh, as far as that, uh, I think that the mod spotlight has come to an end. There is another block in the mod that I haven't figured out. It's the notification interface. It is kind of blinking and doing weird stuff, but I'm not really sure what to use it for or if it's a creative block because um, I can't really find uh, a way to do it either. There are a few creative stuff in here like uh, the creative sword, Grover, and this chest generator. Uh, that gives you like a, a chest and you can change it, I believe, to pyramid, no? Uh, how do I change it? <laughs> Shift click to change category. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah it creates looting chests, of course. I'm stupid. <laughs> ah, that's pretty cool. All right, anyway. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed it. I think this mod is amazing and I love a few of the things in it, specifically the biome painter and the biome capsule. Please do leave me a comment and a like and uh, give me some feedback um, on the stuff here. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.